Hello everyone, welcome back again to Spiritual Growth Tarot and Astrology. I'm Denise. I hope you guys are doing really well. As always, I'm sending you tons of love. And uh, so this is your astrology reading for the week of November 13th through the 19th. And we'll be going through the, we'll cover the, I will cover, <laughs> my guides and I, will cover the, uh, going through the signs of uh, the moon with Cancer to Libra. So anyway, let me grab the camera, bring it overhead, and get these uh, get these charts going for you. Hold on. Okay, so of course it's going to be the midterm melting pot for this week <laughs> and beyond. Uh, it's looking like Georgia will definitely go to runoff. So let's send lots of lots of good vibes to Raphael Warnock and you know unless you're on the other side but if you're on the other side I don't think you'd be watching my channel so anyway uh, for a couple of days we have this really cool see this kite aspect here I, I'm not going to color it in yet because I want to talk about the other things that are the backdrop but for I think it's Sunday and Monday we have this I, I know for sure Sunday Right, 6 a.m. We're starting off 6 a.m. November 13th, and I'm using uh, zero zero degrees Aries um, house setup, so that you can see the natural zodiac the way it falls, uh, you know, through the signs. But also because I don't know where you're at, so to tweak it to where I live would not be right for you. So, but anyway, I most importantly for the backdrop is this Pluto in sextile to Jupiter and then over to this double sextile to Mercury and Venus this morning. This is excellent. Uh, Pluto being the planet of power and bubbling up from the surface trying to bring to light and and strip away what is not the truth. It's going to empower some and disempower others. It's going to eliminate some and uh, bring others into the spotlight where uh, they may still have a lot to say, especially with the uh, Cancer Moon opposing. Could be a lot of emotional, you know, uh, material coming up. But um, it, it's also empowering to women. Because, you know, with the sextile to Venus and Mercury, Mercury would be the planet that rules our voting power and our votes and the ability to tabulate those votes and all of the messages that are coming in uh, from everywhere. So we have to be discerning. With, uh, with Scorpio, we want to make sure that we are listening to trustworthy sources of information and things can get very intense and secrets can come out. And uh, most of all, like in our personal lives, there could be a nice easy flow to dealing with and being with uh, others who are trusted, you know, trusted confidants, uh, people we can share our hearts with, people that we have learned over the years to trust. And then there are those others that we don't trust, but you know what? If you trust yourself, I mean, this is a spiritual law. If you trust yourself, you will always know whether or not. So if you develop your relationship with yourself inwardly, you know yourself very well, then, and usually it takes years of experience, you know, relating with others before you get to that point. But once you have that place where you trust yourself and you know yourself really well, then you also know because we're all the same, right? We're all connected. Once you have something for yourself, you also know what's going on within another person when they're lying to you. Or you'll just, you know, your bullshit meter uh, becomes stronger the more you know yourself. So it's always about learning, learning, to, learning about yourself and then you learn to trust yourself based on guidance you get when you're with other people. Right? Like, does the hair go up in the back of your neck? Do they make you feel like, whoa, what's that? Or do you get a stabbing pain in your heart? Or is there a stabbing pain in your back? Is, is there a pain on the left side or right side? Or do you get visions? 
Does your stomach feel sick? You know, th these are all the questions when we're dealing with relating. Uh, <laughs> so that's still on the table immensely during Scorpio season because with Uranus opposing the Sun, Uranus connected to the North Node, we're all headed in the direction of trusting our bodily instincts to wake us up, help us get those messages. And from there, the deeper, the more deeply you know yourself and the deeper you want to go, the, the more you want to continue to transform yourself. These are, these are all Scorpio and Pluto uh, uh, keywords I'm throwing at you. The more you can go deeply into yourself and regenerate, renew, re, um, remove what's not working right over here <laughs> to Pluto. But Pluto rules Scorpio, right? So the more you're working to transform yourself, then you will come not only into your integrity, but your you know, your functioning ability within intimate relationships and understanding whether or not relationships are a person or a group of people or whatever's going on, you'll know whether or not they're telling you the truth. And that, in a nutshell, covers this aspect here, this opposition between Uranus, connection to the North Node, and opposition to the past, this, all of this, and, you know, we've been building up to this energy for so long. And we're not going to have another uh, full moon lunar eclipse until I think it's, you know, but we have eclipses every year and a half. But when they're an exact lunar eclipse, <clears throat> the next one won't be until 2025. So use this opportunity to continue to clear out whatever isn't working in relationships. Only be with people that you can trust and you can, you'll feel it in your body. Let your body teach you. And <clears throat> moving forward from there, or to further reiterate everything I'm saying, but focusing on Scorpio and Taurus, that's also the truth because Mars is in this square, double square, to Neptune, and Jupiter is blowing it up. You know, we've got a tight orb here, and Mars is going backwards. Well, it doesn't really, none of the planets really go backwards. It's just the relationship we have to, you know, the rest of the planets on Earth, or from our perspective on Earth to the rest of the planets. You know, it's like being in an elevator, and you feel like, wait, did I just go up or down? What the heck just happened? <laughs> It's like that. Or you're pulling up, you know, at a stoplight and the, the other car is, is uh, you, you get that, that feeling of like, oh, shoot, you know, do I, what's going on? Because the other car next to you is doing something else. And anyway, it's like that when it comes to the planets, you know, being in uh, retrograde, retrogradation. So Jupiter has retrograded back enough to having a pretty tight orb here with Neptune, but Neptune is moving into a very tight orb to Mars. Uh, and it's going to be square. We're going to have this Mars square Neptune until December 4th, but Mars is going to be retrograde until, uh, I think it's January 12th next year, until it goes direct. But even when it goes direct, Hold on, I've got my list here. Hold on, let me make sure I give you the right dates. Mercury, Mars, yeah. It went retrograde October 30th. It goes um, retrograde, uh, or goes direct, stations direct January 12th. And, uh, but it's still squaring Neptune until the 4th. And you can see, if you look at this list here, it goes direct at 8 degrees Gemini on Stations and turns direct at eight, oh, January 12th, Mars stations and turns directed at 8 degrees Gemini, but it doesn't leave that retrogradation zone, you know, where we started out 
we started out with it retrograding 25 degrees. So basically, Mars started out at 25. It's going to retrograde all the way back to 8 degrees, Gemini. And then it's going to station direct, and then it'll come back this way. And we have to wait for it to get to, you know, past that 25 degree point before we get out of that retrograde zone. And that won't be till March 15th next year. All right, so that's something to hold hold on to. Hold on to your hats, like I was saying. <laughs> so while it's in this these tight orbs of um, squaring Neptune, that will be until December 4th, right? Uh, it, it's you know, the spin. It's a spin. It's good for, it's it's really, really good to use the energy for learning new things, for getting very curious, for working our way out of dualities, for questioning everything, right? It's awful if you want to avoid things. It's not good for maybe children that are having a hard time focusing and learning, they might need to move around more in order to get their heads to let go. Uh, they might need to, like if you have a little one, what always helped me with my kids is to try and, try and make up a song for what they were trying to learn. Um, and I don't even know if they remember, but, you know, like times table songs, things like that. Make up things that rhyme and let them move around and dance to it. Because if they're saying something and getting it in their body while they're moving around, they get it on a deeper level, and then they can sit down and write it out, which you're going to have to do anyway in school, right? Or maybe things are online and they do it that way. But it, it helps to move, and that's what Mars is all about. So we're moving the body, moving the mind. And that helps us come into our spiritual center if we can do that. If we can get into, stay deeply grounded in our body and be curious enough about things, this can be a wonderful opportunity, especially with Jupiter there, to learn more about spiritual law, learn more about spiritual principles, uh, learn more about anything we're interested in. And it's especially good for all artists and musicians and anybody in a helping profession and anybody who is um, immigrating. It's not good for people who are working through, I mean, it's good, it's good for working through addictions, but it can bring things with Neptune, I'm sorry, with uh, Jupiter there to Neptune. It can blow things up. But we do have this, <laughs> look at this. It looks to me like it's only two here, but when you go up this way, we can see that there's three in exact orb. Uh, so we, we have the flow, a double, triple, you know what I mean? There's a lot of flow here from these two powerful planets up to Venus, healing relationships, healing the mind, and healing something more deeply in our cores with the sun in Scorpio. This Scorpio season can be wonderful. And that's especially true. So I'll, I'll go ahead and color in... Actually, maybe I'll wait until tomorrow because there's a it, it, yeah there's going to be less aspects. Okay, because I still need to I I need to talk about this real quick. So Jupiter in the semi square here to the North Node. This is going to require action in order to grow, in order to move forward. There's going to there's going to be a need to do something in order to grow. We can't just sit and think about it. We have to study. We have to meditate. We have to um, get in touch with what it is inside of us that's holding holding us back. But this, you know, Venus sextiling Pluto, and then Pluto sextiling Jupiter here is wonderful energy for, because Pluto's up at the top, up at the apex, and this being a kite. This is, you know, this is directional here. So growth here with Jupiter and growth with Pluto, you know, coming into your authority, coming into your deep integrity where you know what's right. You don't need a politician to tell you what's right or wrong. 
You know inside. We all know. We all have our inner knowing. As long as all the muck is cleared out of the way, then the inner knowing comes through. So uh, so there's that. And then with Saturn in a quincunx to the moon, so the moon in Cancer, midway Cancer, uh, you know, halfway through the sign of Cancer, again, we are more sensitive. We are wanting safety. We're thinking more about our homes. We're thinking more about security. We're thinking more about how do we protect ourselves. We're also thinking about things from the past. And adjustments need to be made as to how to move forward in safety as well. And I mean, if you just look at this, is, if you think of this as like home and family and the adjustments that need to be made to or coming from the government, we need new laws to protect ourselves. We need we need the people in the government to be, you know, that's their job is to protect us and be th try to think for us. Apparently, we seem to keep having to remind them that they work for us and that we're the ones with the power. I, I'm all for abolishing the electoral college and gerrymandering because without that, we wouldn't be going through what we're going through now. And I see a day in the future, I don't know if, you know, I'll still be on the planet not long, but <laughs> it might take like, who knows. But the younger generation growing up, we're dealing with the Pluto and Sag, well, Pluto, Scorpio, and Sag, and uh, Capricorn coming in. They're, they're not old enough to vote yet. I don't think the old and the, let me think. Pluto went into Capricorn, well, actually 2008. So, yeah, not quite. But regardless, when you think into, or when you feel into the signs of Scorpio, Sag, and Capricorn, it's more outer, It's well, it's deeper in the issues of trust and uh the need for security. And we could put all of the survivors of any school shootings in this category. And also in this category would be all of the um, family members who lost someone to a school shooting or to any type of a violent shooting because we need those gun laws. And that's, of course, this backdrop here to Saturn in this square to Uranus, and we have that, oops, T-square to the south. No, actually, it's not the south node, it's the sun for today. <sighs> yeah, I still feel like it's, I mean, because, you know, I've been talking about this for months and months, you know. I feel probably feel like a broken record to you guys, but... I still feel like there's that connection to the south node, even though it's a five degree separation, you know, 13 to 18. Uh, yeah, it's still there. So Saturn up here in T-square puts the tension on the government, on the rules for society. And we can't move forward unless we're safe because that's where Uranus is headed and Uranus always wins over Saturn. Well, Saturn tests, and then Uranus breaks things open, and then there's a battle, and that's what we've got. So we need to teach the politicians that we want safety. That's their job, is to make sure we have that. It's not their job to uh, get money from lobbyists from, from the NRA, which the NRA, remember, was back in 2019, they were... <laughs> they were... Um, by the Senate Intel Committee, bipartisan Senate Intel Committee, they were uh, pegged as a foreign asset. Now think of all the GOP members who have taken NRA money. Just think about that. I mean, it's easy to find. So hold that in your consciousness the whole time we're thinking about voting and laws that need to be changed or laws that need to be enforced and new laws that need to be established and, uh, you know, codified. So, 
That is, this adjustment here that needs to be made, and we cannot be shy about it. We cannot be timid about it, and we have to be tenacious about it. And then that, if we, as we do that, we, can, we have this nice flow. Look at all of this flow up to the feminine, up to the way we think about it, what we do about it. And we're coming from the past of, we've seen how you guys operate. We, we want things to be different. And then bring in powerful Pluto and the sextile to Jupiter that blows things up and says, uh, we, we want you guys thinking about everyone. Indigenous children, indigenous women, uh, we, we, want, we want rights for everyone. We want the truth out. That's what Pluto will bring out. And, and then, <laughs> I, I was already talking about the triple trying up here, but now can you see the, right here, see the kite? Because it's there for tomorrow too. And that extra um, oomph of flow from Neptune to the moon, so notice that the moon's going to go this way, right? And 18 to 22, so during the day we're going to have an exact trine, an exact flow of spiritual energy, uh, or artistic energy too. Well, it's all the same, spiritual source energy, it's all the same. Neptune represents our spirituality and how we're all interconnected and how compassionate we can be towards each other, how sensitive we can be towards each other. And it dissolves things. The planet Neptune dissolves things. So what does it need to dissolve with the square to Mars? Would be lies. People that lie and take money from foreign countries and want to, they want to be a, in a position of power. They want to be in their leadership in some position of authority in our government. And I, I don't know how you guys feel, but I don't think that's right. In fact, I think that's treasonous. And I think they should be banned from any government position for the rest of their lives and put in, uh, I don't know, Rikers or something. Not in Club Fed. So, the other things going on for the day, you can see the trine from Uranus to the moon. So things are going to be, there's going to be some shaking up today. People are going to be feeling very protective. Remember, Cancer wants to protect things, and it remembers the past. It doesn't like not being, uh, you know, thought of and considered and cared for. And cancer doesn't let go easily, you know, especially when there's four trines to scorpionic energy because neither one of these two signs let go. Pisces does. Pisces will let go. So there will be some people that are letting go, but what are they letting go into? I'm going to guess it's their own personal power. I don't see that it has to do with letting go into the government. I think there's a battle on their hands. If, um, if any of these people, and they're trying already, you know, they're trying to do the recounts. Well, you know, maybe taxpayers don't want to pay for those recounts in certain states. So maybe Carrie Lake needs to just uh, lick her wounds and go home for good. But, you know, this, this spin right here from Jupiter and Neptune blowing up the spin to Mars. This right here. We could very well just call this Fox News or Pox News because if if nobody watched if there was no Fox News, uh, think of all the damage that wouldn't have happened. Think of all the lives that could have been saved. They need to be taken off the airwaves. Uh, yeah, free speech is one thing, but lies. Hmm. We need laws against the lies. I'm hoping that's the reason why we have Mars for seven months, I think, in this <laughs> retrograde. Six to seven months. Usually Mars uh, moves through one sign in about a month and a half. But no, 
it's going to be in Gemini for uh, all the way through March. Or beyond that, actually. So, what else? The aspect of the architect is happening here. So, from Uranus to the moon. So Uranus wakes up. The moon in Cancer wants to protect, wants security and stability. And it's got all the power of this sextile, what am I saying, stellium in Scorpio. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of fight. That's a lot of uh, sensitivity and wisdom. And yeah, we do have the um, Mars in this um, uh, quincunx here. Let's see, it's only a one, one and a half to two degree orb, so it's going to Mercury. Well, that's certainly, so okay, information, well, yeah, of course. Now, this can be personal and political. Information that comes out uh, as to the voting uh, record, or for, you know, to, as to the tabulation, I will cause adjustments to be, to be made. <laughs> you don't need to be an astrologer to know that, but it's beautiful how astrology is pointing, you know. If we didn't have an election, we, I would still say... Uh, the, there's there will be messages coming out and you're going to need to make adjustments based on what you learn and yeah especially because of the aspect of needing safety and security and then Chiron in this um, aspect here to the south node this is this is going to be an orb for quite some time so I'll go ahead and move on to Monday because that that'll still be there okay so that's that weekly overview and you can see how so I was talking about Chiron and remember Chiron is a wounded healer but it's where we also have well it's a it's a teaching um it's a centaur teaching uh principle normally ruled by Sag it's in fiery Aries it's bringing up the wounding around what about me what about my individual individuality? Don't I matter? Right? This goes out to everyone. And then it's in this uh, quincunx to the south node. And it's like <laughs> we've been here for so long. It's ridiculous to go backwards. No one likes to, especially Aries, it doesn't like to, none of us like to go backwards in freedoms right so that's you know this is going to be here for quite some time and the in conjunct uh, from Mars now there's this other one to the Sun because the Sun is moving this way Mars is just gonna sit there Mars isn't going anywhere for a while but the Sun is moving forward and that's why we have that tight orb there. So the sun will be a spotlight of some information, some deep, something that comes up. And there will be adjustments to how we move forward. So again, to the, um, you know, tabulation of the, vo the vote. And you can see the, see the beautiful kite energy here. It's still there. But now we have the moon in Leo. <laughs> and... It's opposing, it was building that opposition from yesterday, but now we have an even tighter orb opposition uh, to Pluto. So more power to the people, more power to those who want to share from the heart and express themselves. Leo is all about our creative self-expression coming from who we truly are and who we identify as, uh, it rules uh, usually children, but so can cancer, and sometimes rules the father, but I also see the father as being, you know, Sat Saturnian influence. And the T-square, you know, with Saturn, that's, that's there all week, this opposition all week. Uh, 
the nodes always have, the north and south node are always in opposition. And remember, oppositions can lead to breakthroughs. They're confrontations from one end to the other. So we're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right? I want safety. Do I, do I want to initiate violence about it? No, better not do that, right? But they're trying to they're trying to, you know, do all these things to us that they've done for years and years and eons and uh, right? No, we have to fight fair, right? Because we have to stay in integrity. If others are not in integrity, that's their issue. That's on them. And they will pay for it in some lifetime, if not this one. So the moon is in that beautiful kite. It's at the apex. If it weren't for the moon here, we would not have the kite. So let's focus in on that. So the kite, like I said, Pluto's, Pluto's up here as the powerful point because it's Pluto moving slow, more slowly. But if it weren't for the moon here, we wouldn't have the double trine here and the trine here. So see the kite there from Jupiter. Let me color it in a little bit and then I'll talk about it. Okay. All right. So think of these trines here as just a, a flow of energy that connects easily. So from the moon in Leo, this is about my way, not yours. Not, especially if you're a dirty politician. No, we're going to fight. And, you know, it even we even have like a diamond shape here, right? And this is all about personal power. This has to do with healing. Whatever J Jupiter focuses in on, it wants to open up something. It wants to explore something. Hold on one second. <coughs> it wants to know where to invest our energy. Uh, it's all about our belief systems, primarily. And, you know, these are the two planets I look for, you know, in relationship to spiritual law. Hold on, I gotta grab some water. Okay, that's better. So, so Jupiter wants to open up and teach us more about spiritual law, which is those laws and principles are all, we could just call them the laws of love. Pluto's up here at this powerful point. It's no longer retrograde, but it's not out of that um, like retro shade point until um, the end of January next year. So this is really important that Jupiter has moved backwards because it was in Aries, remember, and it's moved backwards. Um. Let me see how far back will it go. Hold on. Um, eight degrees. Uh, yeah, oh my goodness, that's right. It made it all the way to eight degrees Aries. It went retrograde um, July 28th, direct October. Wait, no. It goes, it stations and turns direct on November, so so just right, well, that might even be, I don't know what date November 23rd lands on, but it very well could be um, Thanksgiving in America. 28 degrees Pisces. So it's not going to go, it's, it's not really gone back too far. Yeah. But then we have to wait until uh, February, so Valentine's Day, uh, before it gets to that 8 degrees Aries, almost 9, yeah, that's right, I remember it was 8 degrees 55 minutes, yeah, almost 9 degrees over here. So, so Jupiter did this, it, it, it was, remember we had the Neptune-Jupiter conjunction in August, like August 12th, um, was it last year, right, year before, and then it went forward, so Jupiter, I remember when Jupiter was up here, and then it came through, and we had the Jupiter conjunction, and then it kept going, and, and we had the Jupiter conjunct um, Chiron, and that waked a lot of people up to their need for healing, you know, healing their deeper, the deepest wounding 
that you have is what Chiron's all about. But it also helps you connect and bring through your deepest gifts. So it touched Chiron and now it's gone back and it's, it's almost, well, it won't touch, but it's going about as far as it can to uh, Neptune. And this is why, you know, we have, we've had these uh, these storms, so we do have to be careful because, you know, Nep uh, Jupiter expands anything that it touches. Um, but it, it's a warning, right? It's a warning that that all the states that are along the coast, we have to be very careful about investing more infrastructure there because, I don't know, if I lived along the coast, I would I would... I mean, certain parts of the coast to get hurricanes, I would be selling and getting the heck out of Dodge because it's not it's only going to get worse because our politicians have not done anything much except, you know, Biden's doing something. Uh, Obama was prevented from doing anything. It was a miracle he got the um, the uh, Affordable Care Act passed. So, anyway, I'm just thinking back of, you know, back in the days of Al Gore, like 2007, remember when this movie came out, The Inconvenient Truth? That was our first, actually, I mean, people since the 80s have been worried about it, but that was our first real big wake-up call. Did we do anything? Nope. Nope. Didn't do a damn thing. So Biden's trying to do something, and he's got a battle on his hands. Now, we have to think outside the box. That's what Saturn in Aquarius is about. Saturn is one of the karmic planets. I mean, I look at the whole thing as karma, but because karma is just the law of cause and effect. But because we didn't uh, do anything about it, the government didn't do anything about it to protect us. We have to think in terms of protecting ourselves. And how do we do that, right? Well, don't live near an earthquake fault line. Uh, don't live near places that have hurricanes. If you, if you do, sell your place and get the hell out. Come to, you know, no. Don't, don't move in Hurricane Alley either, you know. Do your research and find the safest places to live. But be careful about where you're getting your information from, too. But take that time and do your research. And we might not get to live where we want to live, right? I mean, I'd love to live on the ocean, too. But I did my research. That's why I moved. I. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox about that. But, you know, when I see things like Neptune in Pisces and Jupiter conjunct and Mars over here squaring, it, it alarms me because this makes for hurricane weather, right? Because we're talking, and, and gas, gas problems. This is, I mean, it's all right here. Here's the corporate greed. Here's the blowing up of the corporate greed. Here's OPEC. Uh, here's all the dirty politicians, and even Saturn there that don't don't care. The downside of uh, Aquarius is they don't care. Uh, and and then here we have Mars bringing that information out. Now a lot of people don't have the luxury to take the time to research because they're working. 14, 16 hours a day. They barely have enough time to get enough sleep. They don't even have enough time to cook for themselves. Think, think in terms of that. That's where the dirty politicians want us all to be, so that we don't have time to think about what could be good for us or time to figure out what they've been doing. They want to keep us all in destitute, and they want us all just paying taxes all the time. So think about those things, of course, we've already voted, but think about those things when you think about whether or not you can trust. Can you trust FEMA? I wouldn't. Uh, can you trust the uh, whichever president's in power at the time that you have 
a natural catastrophe. I mean, can we always trust them? Yeah, we sure as hell couldn't trust uh, Bush. The only thing we could trust Bush and Cheney for was uh, making a whole lot of money off of uh, creating a war that didn't need to be even started. Uh, but anyway, okay, so let's move forward with, with us. For us, personally, with that backdrop politically, and if you don't want to be on board with that, then probably would want to watch another astrology channel who won't say what they think because they're afraid to take a stand. But I'm here to take a stand. I'm not saying you have to come with me. I'm just telling you what I see. Uh, with this trine from Mars to Saturn, there is a flow to think outside the box and get into your personal power and uh, create a solid foundation, master some area. In fact, wherever Saturn is in your chart, in your natal chart, you're having this T-square in opposition, and you have had for months. So whatever you've been trying to master in your life, wherever you've been trying to think outside the box to create something really strong and stable, but you are feeling kind of delayed and, and maybe, um, maybe even denied, uh, what you want. Just keep on keeping on. Don't don't give up because Saturn will teach us. Saturn will help us master something. And but it's also this T square up here is also the um, you know the fear that they're trying to make us. Um, well, they're they're just trying. That's how they make money. Is they keep spinning. The information spin in the lies, and the lies are you can't trust you can't trust your brothers and sisters out there. They're all they're bad. And and if a person's racist, or if a person is uh, out of integrity and they're not loving and they're not kind, they could. It's easy to go into that fear. But remember, the fear is on top of the hate, and the fear is trying to the fear is really there to cover up the hate. The hate has to do with racism, sexism, xenophobia, anything different than, you know, I guess that's redundant to say that, but that's what xenophobia is, is something that is, you think is different than you. But we're all, we all bleed the same. We're all human. We all breathe. We all need to eat. We do human things. So why be afraid of each other? Just because we have a different color of skin, I mean, that's ridiculous. And I think that there are many more of us than that, that think, that, like I do, than there are that are afraid of each other. But for some reason, they have a vote, you know, well, because the orange monster, monster, like, let that <laughs> be a thing. Is to, it's okay to hate each other. Yeah, just let your lower self come out and, you know. So we are unmasking the lower self and, you know, humanity as a whole. And you have to take a stand because, well, at least this is my belief, it's no longer safe to just be in the middle. It, for, for now, until we heal what we need to heal, if we don't go to the light, we are complicit with the dark. And I don't want that for anyone. But... You know, everyone has their own free will, and that's their choice day to day. So, I think I'm speaking here to the moon and Leo heart energy that wants to bring in that deeper truth and align with spiritual law and then be on our merry way in our own power, our own integrity. So, okay. Because remember, the Leo moon is definitely a spotlight because the sun rules Leo. Okay, so for Tuesday, yay, the moon's still in Leo, but now it's in a T-square. Right? So, so see the square here from Uranus? It's to the north node and, and to the south node. But... Because the moon is moving this way, 
it's also going to be uh, the moon square Uranus. So some things are going to change. The moon changes. That's a T-square there. So besides the opposition, remember the confrontation, the possibility for breakthrough, the moon is going to shine a light on something from the past. Some, something's going to come out on the news today. Something from the past so that we can see the truth and wake up and, and then do something about it. Because the moon wants to connect you know, so that it can respond, right? It's very nurturing and intuitive, but in Leo, it's stronger. It's more about, oh, wait, is that, is that the way to go? Because Leo is all about courage, as well as uh, uh, Aries. But Aries kind of comes from that, <clears throat> excuse me, that spontaneous courage. And uh, Leo's more, even more courageous. Because, you know, Aries can, like, it's usually <laughs> two steps forward and then one step back. It's like, oh. I put that out there. Oh, shoot, maybe I need to, you know, regroup and figure something out before I do it again. Or do, I can do it better if I just, you know, come back. But by the time we're in Leo, which is the other, you know, fire sign, besides Sag, we don't have anything in Sag right now, uh, it's very well thought out. But when the moon is connected to Leo, it's bringing in more uh, intuition. So there's, a, there's more force and more uh, need for the courage. So our emotional response for the day, our feeling response for the day, I think will be a lot more courageous. And it's also about um, the moon in mundane astrology is, you know, the, the public. So the, I think the public is going to be more courageous than, than ever. We just have to... Um, we might have to be careful if we're seeing some shenanigans going on, or as Joe Biden would say, some malarkey. <laughs> so anyway, Mars is in a, a quincunx here to the sun. And again, yeah, I really do. And, and Mercury there with the trine. Yeah, so I'm just going to say simply... And with the sesqui square here to the moon, Jupiter, yeah, I'm feeling there's going to be a big news dump today, not for Tuesday the 15th. What it will be, I can't say, because it could be a lot of things. Interesting. If it has something to do with the orange mango Mussolini, I wouldn't be surprised because this moon would be coming through in his, this aspect here would be coming through his uh, 12th house of <laughs> secrets and problems. The 12th house can be full of good things too, but not for him. Interesting. Okay. In fact, wait, do I even have this chart close by? Because I'm wondering, is that... What degree is this Pluto? Here we go. Oh, sorry. I have all my dirty notes. Just myself. Wait. No, I don't have anything better there. Well, it was transits. Oh, when when he got the January 6th subpoena, when that vote happened. Letitia Jameson. Okay. Let's see. So, his Pluto's at 10 degrees. 10 degrees, Leo. So when, when the moon comes and transits right next to, it'll be at 12 degrees. So even before, even before this, yeah, that's good enough, okay. Even before this um, T-square, it's going to cross over his Pluto. Uh, moon Pluto is, isn't good if you're not healthy. <laughs> it's not. It's going to blow up. I think he's going to be angry. I think that it's going to blow up something inside of him that's not 
that's not so fun to look at, you know, because he's a mess. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see. What else for the day for Tuesday? With the moon, you can see the opposition here to Saturn. And this is a building exact opposition because as it, you know, once it gets to 19, we have an exact. Whoa. We've got a nice little arrow going on there, don't we? Look at that, right? Well, here, I'll do it in orange real quick just so you can see it. So from here to the moon and then over here to uh, the sun. That's building that exact square into the south. It's right now to the south node. But then it, as the moon keeps moving forward, I've got an arrow going on. Yeah. Okay. So think in, with Saturn, think in terms of the government, the man, the establishment. <laughs> With Uranus, think in terms, and the square from Saturn to Uranus, think in terms of um, rebellion. And the moon's going to energize because it's, it has the connection to the sun, the building, you know, uh, exact square to the sun. But it's got the power early this morning, Tuesday morning, uh, of the connection to the south node to pissed off women and pissed off people that don't like what has happened. We've had enough of it. But apparently we need this battle. So, and I don't know if you guys can also see, because of the square, you know, to the nodes, and and the, uh, the sun is energized there too as well. We have a grand square this morning. And it's a building grand square. Okay, I can't wait to see what Wednesday's about. Oh, I'm sorry, a grand square. So the squares are tension fields. But when you work through them, or if they're in your natal chart, they turn into strengths. I, I have grand, a grand square in my chart, too. Uh, it's not exact, but I have two, two T-squares. So it's no fun. <laughs> but you know what? You work through it, and you become stronger. Uh, so, the moon's at 24 degrees on Wednesday. We have the aspect of the architect here from Saturn to Mars and the moon. Mars is at the focal point, like the bucket point. I feel like something's resolved. There's some. I feel like there's some new strength to build upon Wednesday. We we have the moon squaring, I think I'll skip the highlighter there, the moon squaring three, oh, and that's right, Venus has moved into Sag, Mercury's going to move into Sag pretty soon too, ooh, so the women are moving forward, people are unifying, so remember, Venus is about uniting people together, it is, it's uh, persuasive is one of the keywords with Venus. Uh, you know, think in terms of, like, think of uh, Barack Obama. He has Sun conjunct Venus in Leo. So think of Leo energy, heart energy, the ability to speak, the ability, the courage to speak, and combine that with a, a uniting force. And we have this aspect here spelled out, I think, pretty good. And so now, not only the women, but any person that wants to be in union with harmony, uh, Venus is all about relationships and money. And in Sag, that brings in that element of freedom, speaking up. What do you believe in? The exploration of what matters, exploring what certain things mean. What are they saying? There's an adjustment here. <clears throat> what are they saying? Is it the truth? Are you being truthful in your life? Have you just figured out something that really matters to you and now you have more meaning in your life? And so now with that new discovery, because Sag is all about discovery, 
it's also uh, it's also intuitive. You know, unless unless you're just a dumbass like Herschel Walker. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if he's a Sag, but when I see Sag, I think of organized sports, organized religion, and the dark side of Sag. I think of organized sports and religion. And, um, like, why? But, uh, so anyway, let's, let's let go of that, and let's think in terms of, for us, uh, uniting with our intuition. And now that we have that deeper heart or deeper um, powerful connection within, what do we do with that energy? Because there's something, there's an adjustment that needs to be made once you know what you know. Once you know what you know, you can't go back. The moon in, in uh, the courageous moon in Leo, late degree Leo, later degree Leo, won't let you go back either. You wouldn't want to once you know what you know. And the courage is needed in order to make this adjustment to be in our integrity. What do we want and are we willing... How much are we willing to fight for it? Now, it has to be done in legal ways, but are we willing to keep writing letters and send them to our uh, representatives? Are we willing to donate in order to, you know, that's the thing. Um, I heard this morning that, because um, I do these readings, you know, like a week ahead of time, but I heard this morning that um, the Democratic Party is throwing $7 million to Georgia to get through the runoff. But we could, we could donate to Georgia, you know, to the, we could, we could donate to Raphael Warnock. But are we, so can we? And if we can, are we willing? Like there's these questions on the table. What, what matters to you? Uh, can we donate and give energy to people like Sheldon Whitehouse or anyone with him uh, who is working to get dark money out of politics? Can we donate to get rid of uh, Citizens United and the Federalist Society and people like Leonard Leo uh, but if you're not wanting, you know, anything to do with politics on a personal level, this could be a very courageous day where you can really build something because now you have the information that you need and that you want. And this could be the political backdrop, but also in your personal life, there's more courage. <laughs> there's more courage because you have the information the opportunity of information, and then there's a challenge to what you're going to do with it. But just go for where go for wherever your heart is leading you. Leo is so connected to heart energy, and then have the courage to make that adjustment to um, something that you can build that's very very solid and powerful from within. And also, because of this, oh, you know what? Check this out. Hold on, I, I do have to color something in. Oh, no, it's not exact. Well, I, I'm going to still talk about it. So, these two quincunxes here to the moon. So, coming from Pluto and Neptune, because we only go with a, a really tight orb with the quincunxes. And this was building, too. We don't have an exact finger of fate here because this one comes from Neptune up to Pluto, so I can't really say that, but we can talk about these two here. So the the moon has been building into this uh, since last night, into this, um, since uh, Tuesday night, into this double need for adjustment to have your courage to express yourself 
and that will bring you into your personal power and also uh, connect you more deeply to your higher self with, um, with Neptune there. That's really wonderful. And we still have the opposition there to Saturn, but it's waning. You can see how the moon's at 24 and Saturn's going this way to, you know, from 19. So, uh, but it's still there. So whatever it is you're working on, I think it's going to be really wonderful to, um, to just step into that. Don't be afraid. Just go for it. Just go for it. If you make mistakes, they're not really mistakes. They're just, a, you know, an opportunity to redo it. So, yeah, everything else is the same. There's a lot that's been you know, for all week long that I spoke about in the beginning. Okay, so today what's different? For Thursday, the moon's in Virgo. It's trining and it's building to an exact trine to the north node. So the moon in Virgo brings in that practical nature of life where we can get into order I always look to Virgo for divine order. And Mercury rules Virgo. Mercury's now in Sag. So Mercury and Venus are going to, you know, travel <laughs> in Sag together for a while. Mercury will, will definitely overtake it because it goes fat, much faster than Venus. But for now, we do have a square this morning from the moon to... Um, to Venus. So I'm thinking that the courage that we had is now, we're now in that phase of like, oh, well, how do we, how do we bring it into form? What do we have to do? You know, Virgo wants to like clear things out and make it right. It tracks details and it discerns. And it's squaring Venus in uh, Sag. Sag wants to bring in the truth. Right? So the moon, so the public is one is wanting to unite with the truth, but there's a challenge to that, and that challenge is coming from the spin of lies. You know, it's like how how do you I guess we you just keep telling the truth. If Fox News is going to survive, or if it's going to turn in, you know, into some other media, whatever news source, it's not really news, but uh, if there, if the lies are going to be out there, or if in your personal life somebody is lying to you, and now you know it's a lie, what do you do with that information so that you can move forward? Because Sagittarius is directional. Sagittarius wants that freedom, remember? It wants, the, it wants to believe in something. Well, if, if you're a liar, you, nobody's going to want to believe in you, and no one's going to want to stay connected to you, right? Now, on another level, too, Sagittarius wants to be believed, they don't like not being believed, and they don't like not being free. That's why it's one of those signs that's hard to commit, you know, like. <laughs> they usually don't like committing. And there can be some patriotic bullshit, because we're talking, you know, religious dogma. Patriotic, dogmatic, you know, rigid rules. And I don't think... We're, it's like, again, you know, homie, don't play that. Homie, don't play that no more. <laughs> but once you see the truth, and once you have the details, because it's, uh, maybe it's written down somewhere, maybe you've discovered a piece of information, a lawsuit, uh, maybe somebody's been pleading the fifth four or five hundred times in one sitting. We know who did that. We know a couple of people that have done that. And so now we never believe them anymore if you're smart. But if you're in a cult, then they're your savior and you don't dare turn away from Fox News. Well, what do we do with those people? We just pray for them, right? We just send them love and keep telling the truth. Keep speaking the truth. 
if they're coming at you, then you set your healthy boundary. That's what Saturn in Aquarius will teach us. Healthy boundaries are one of the most important things that an empath or a sensitive person or people that are compassionate and caring need. Otherwise, otherwise you, you can be taken out. You know, these people, crazy people will hurt you. You have to stay away from them. Uh, so yeah, so if they won't back off and if they won't uh, leave you alone or if they're coming at you, this is, you know, this is why we have, this is supposed to be why we have the police and government and military. But if they're not doing their job or they're part of the problem, we've really got a battle, of course. So I, the moon in Virgo will help us discern that. The moon will help in Virgo will help us connect the dots to getting to the details. Virgo above all is details. It wants to, now not maybe so much in the early degrees, but in the later degrees as the moon moves through the sign of Virgo, which will, you know, take us through, I think that we end up with the moon in, in Libra uh, afterwards. But while it's moving through the entire sign of Virgo, we're going to want to bring something into order. We're going to want to uh, have something that we really care about. We don't want chaos. And um, if it's a personal issue, be careful about needing to be perfect. Right? Remember, just hold on to that healthy boundary and you don't necessarily need to say any more reason why that no is there, especially if you've said it before and they're still not hearing you. Um, so, let's see. The moon trining, moving into that exact trine to the north node, is that so that's the leading edge there is to get to the details of the truth and discern whatever it is that you need to know and uh, as the moon moves forward also have a trying to uh, you're on us so there there can be a wonderful breakthrough there so all the other aspects are the same as earlier in the week I mean, this is one of those weeks where once you're all done listening to this, you could always go back and listen to the weekly overview because so many of these aspects are still in um, are still in play. Now, even though we don't have that square to the south node from Saturn, it's still there. It's, see, we're, we're just you know, it's like a there's a five degree cutoff. But with these strong aspects like that, I allow at least six and sometimes up to 10. So let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about here? Yeah, no, that it's just that the moon is, with the moon in Virgo, we're really, we're discerning what really matters to us, and I think it's going to be the truth. We want the truth. We want the truth about the, the votes. We want the truth about why people have done what they've done in the past, and we want justice. And we're moving towards that as the moon moves into Libra, but we still have some ways to go. Now, look at this beautiful flow of energy from the moon on Friday morning. Uh, the moon up to Pluto, and then over to Uranus, like I was saying. And the uh, north node is still there. So the north node is the direction we're heading. With Uranus, it's to wake up and safety, lots of inventions for safety are created when, whenever uh, Uranus transits through Taurus. Self-preservation, your values, nice easy flow there. Uh, it could be a wonderful weekend. And, well, Thursday, Friday, Saturday could be, through, through to Saturday could be wonderful for organizing for the entire, like next week, you know. Uh, there's an adjustment coming off here, though, to Saturn. But I think it would be a good adjustment because once you've discerned what you want and you're working to organize that in your life, 
uh, you, you, that's what helps bring things into form, especially with that connection to Saturn there. So let's see, what else? Well, the moon square Mars is tricky. And it's moving into an exact square. I, uh, yeah, again, if somebody is lying, I think that your BS meter is going to go off. And we can see that Mars is in this T square, and the moon is building up. So, so the Neptune square Mars, you know, the aspect about the the uh, the lying spin all the time. Uh, you know, from the political parties that have been lying and the news sources that have been lying, uh, it's building up to a T-square with the moon in uh, Virgo. And the moon is opposing Neptune. So again, there's a, there's a real emphasis here as to what is the truth and who's lying. And then from there, the more you know, the better you can handle it. See, these aspects are the same. The moon with the trine to Pluto, the, and especially as the moon, it, it's just a, a, a early degree orb, but it's going to get a t into a tighter orb as the moon moves forward to powerful Pluto. So details about people in power and what they're doing and seeing the spin of lies, wow, again, feels like another news dump day. Or, or the news dump has come out and now there's the proof, maybe some documents uh, come out to back up what was said the days before, that, which would be, you know, more tabulation of votes. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, recounts, voting recounts. That's what I'm getting with this. Ugh. All right. But personally, again, it, this is all about organizing your life with people who you can trust, people who have your back and you have theirs, and you're solid and so happy that you're solid, and the building of bliss that continues to grow. Because that's the thing. When you're in alignment with spiritual law, you're in alignment with the laws of love. And the laws of love create this benign circle of abundance that continues to grow and grow and grow. But when you're in negativity, that has a finite source of energy because it implodes, it goes back on itself because it's meant to, you know, put you in a box of limitation so you can get your lessons. So if people are doing that, uh, you probably are going to want to stay away from them because just remember, you know, you can always judge where a person is at based on the people they hang out with. So don't give your energy away to people who want to just use you. That's like a huge overview with everything going on with Pluto and Capricorn. Uh, and it has been for years. So let's see, what else? I think that's about it. There's just such a nice, powerful flow to discern and create something very useful. It's, it's great for... <laughs> I mean, I know we're going into the weekend, but it's like it's great. It's great for working. It's Friday it looks to me like a good work day. Now, with this adjustment here to Saturn, it could be that you get something thrown at you later in the day, and it's and it's like, oh crap! I have to stop what I'm doing and get this done. <laughs> it could happen. Seriously. Okay, Saturday. The moon's in Libra early this morning. Still in that trying to powerful Pluto. But now we have a double sextile here. So sextiles are opportunities to Mercury, the messenger, and Venus, the unifier. So a harmonious relationship 
a harmonious bridge, Libra bridge, uh, of information and I would say opportunity of fairness, equality, and truth. And we have the aspect of the architect going on twice up here. Venus and Mercury. I'm I'm feeling like Saturday by Saturday we've we've really come a long ways in knowing where we stand with the um, vote counts. There's uh, a little bit of stubbornness here from some people with uh, to move forward, but it's okay. It'll work its way out. I. Uh, yeah, a little bit. There's going to be a little bit of stubbornness in, in some people that just don't want to decide to let go. So that that could if it's in your personal life, just know that it'll pass. Just stay just stay in your balanced fairness. You know, Libra always wants to um, stay connected to people. Usually, it's all about partnership and making decisions. Be careful about people pleasing, though. When it comes to Libra energy, you want to be careful with um, what's that old saying? A peace at any price. There's always a price if you're giving yourself away. And but you know we live and learn. Don't don't ever beat yourself up for it. Just just move forward and and go. Oh, okay, I got it. And know that um, when you're saying no to someone else, it it can be a no given in love. Because you're no longer allowing them to abuse you. And when we allow people to abuse us, we're actually abusing them because we're not giving them the lesson that they need, that they are not allowed to abuse others. So that's something to think about, too. Like, if they're hurting you, uh, they're also... You know, it, it, that's part of that whole victim persecutor, you know, triangle thing. You have to get yourself out of that. Otherwise, you become the persecutor and then they're victimized. And, you know, it's like it just, it's a big mess. It's a vicious circle to get out of. But once it's done, uh, then you're done with that lesson. And it's, there's nothing more valuable than having very healthy, strong boundaries. So hold on to who you are. We have a nice, I mean, it's an opposition here uh, to Jupiter, but it can certainly help heal something. We can have a healing breakthrough on Saturday. And maybe it happened on Friday night because, uh, yeah, because as soon as the moon got to uh, 28 degrees, well, shoot, even, even at that 25, let's see, what was it? Um, yeah, once once it got to about like 20, even 20, you would start feeling that moon opposing Jupiter. And uh, remember, again, Jupiter's all about healing. Jupiter wants to open things up. Jupiter wants to help you grow, most of all. Jupiter's all about abundance. And with the moon, you're more intuitively inclined to connect with that you know, when the moon's there's that opposition. But it might bring up something like you realize you can't get to abundance or the abundant place within a relationship because Libra rules relationships. Uh, and you realize you do have to cut and run or say no because in a no sometimes is loving, the loving thing to do. And there, then, then we have the breakthrough. Then there is the healing that happens. So other than that, I think that's about it. I mean, there can be a little bit of stubbornness if there's some fear going on. But again, just always surrender to the forces of love and things will work out. Now, loving yourself is primary. You can't really love anyone else until you love yourself first. And others can teach us how to love ourselves through the through the vehicle of not loving us. <laughs> right? Those are the tricky ones. But other than that, I think I'm going to go ahead and close this up and wish you a wonderful week. Sending you tons of love as always. And um, take good care. Okay, bye.